You're listening to The Goop Podcast, made possible by our friends at Blue Diamond. We're big snackers around the Goop office. You know the drill. Three o'clock rolls around and you find yourself reaching for whatever is lying around and striking distance. Last resort snacking, as it turns out, usually isn't all that satisfying, which is why we decided to give our snack drawers a makeover and stock them with Blue Diamond whole natural almonds. I go for handfuls before meetings. Often multiple handfuls, if I'm honest, because they're that good. Between the fats and minerals in Blue Diamond's non pareil Supreme Almonds, they're significantly healthier than popping candy or chips throughout the day, and they actually tide me over until dinner time. Head over to goop.com for some recipes made with Blue Diamond Whole Natural Almonds. Hey again, it's Elise Lunan, Goop's Chief Content Officer. Every week on the Goop Podcast, Gwyneth or I sit down with leading thinkers, top doctors, researchers, and visionaries. We talk about breaking down barriers, and we learn a lot. We typically drop new episodes every Thursday. Today is the last special episode in a three-part Tuesday series. It's a conversation that happened live at our InGoop Health Summit in Vancouver. There, I got to sit down with a nutritionist, an MD, and a naturopathic doctor who have taught me so much about gut health. The first person you'll hear me chatting with today is registered dietitian Carlene Karst. She's based in Port Moody, British Columbia, and she's the founder of Sealicious Omega-3. I think long-term you have to really adopt an eating plan that's going to work for you. It's about lifestyle changes. It's not about losing 10 pounds now and then gaining 20 back in six months. In addition to Carlene, you're going to hear from my friend, the naturopathic doctor Nigma Talib, who splits her time between London and L.A., She's known for helping her patients resolve both skin and gut issues. Her book is called Younger Skin Starts in the Gut. She works with me on my wine and dairy face, and we talk today about why so much of how we look and feel comes back to what we eat. 99% of the time, that skin problem is gone within three months. Mm -hmm. And that dermatologist that we're giving them steroid creams, that's just a Band-Aid approach. That is not getting to the root cause. Mm -hmm. And that is what we as practitioners and as, you know, writers and what we're trying to get out there is that the root cause is sitting in your gut. If you've been following Goop for a bit, you'll likely know today's final expert, our OG doctor, Alejandro Younger. He's a cardiologist by training. He was become a real trailblazer of functional medicine and specifically within the field of gut health. He's the founder of one of the original detox programs called Clean. He's a best-selling author, and he's one of the people in this world who I could talk to forever. And the way that I discovered all these things, they were not because I was a purist and, oh, let me think about how the wild human beings would eat. I got really sick from eating junk, you know, and, and, and then I went to the doctors and I got tons of pills and I said, wow, I don't want to deal with that. So I started looking for things. With that, let's get into today's talk. Carlene, let's start with you. What's your dietary philosophy? How should most people be eating? Good question. I mean, I think that I feel we need to eat a lot more plants. Mm -hmm. And uh, plant-based eating is here to stay. It's not just a trend for 2018. And I think there's so much wisdom we can find for our bodies when we incorporate more um, real food, whole foods. It sounds simple, but it's actually not. No, it's not. When we talk about like dairy and the wine and all of these things that we love, I think that on a day-to-day basis in and out, we just really need to focus on real whole food and avoiding artificial preservatives and coloring. If you're going to eat meat, grass-fed... Mm -hmm. Um, healthy oils, healthy omegas in your diet, Um, and just really look at those foods, making every bite count. You know, so every time you eat, how is this nourishing your body? Because what you put in your mouth every day influences how you feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all know when we've indulged too much or eaten things that don't serve our body, how it can uh, lead us to the end of vacation saying, I can't wait to just eat salad. (laughs) So we really just, I think, need to make that a conscious, conscious part of our day. And how do you feel about it? I mean, it's interesting because you can you see it probably. I don't always have like physical reactions, but you kind of know what I'm doing, not just from Instagram. But <laughs> for you, what are you besides those three? How do you like people to eat? Do you know what? I don't think there's a one size fits all model, and I think we all need to be more intuitive with our bodies. And we know when we eat something, it's like ooh. 
that wasn't good. And you get bloated or you get constipation or you get, sorry, I'm going to be talking a lot about shit today. Sorry, because <laughs> that's my job. Sorry, I hope nobody was offended by that. But, you know, it's like you get those reactions when you eat particular foods. And so for me, I also see people making the mistake where they're like, okay, I'm going to eat salads and be really, really healthy. And in my training as a naturopathic doctor, we study traditional Chinese medicine. And warming foods are really important, especially when we're going into the you know, fall season here, is that it's very hard to digest raw food mm. in general. It's very difficult. And especially most of us in here, I think every single one of you in here has had heartburn, uh, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, gas, all of that stuff. All of us experience that. So most of us have had digestive issues. So if you're having digestive issues, eating raw food might not be the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. Plant-based food, exactly what Carlene was saying, is so important, but warm it up, steam yeah. it, you know, get a, give your digestion a break and give it some support. So, you know, what might be good for you might be not good for you. So try to eat more, be more intuitive how you feel when you eat something. Is your heart racing? Are you getting a skin reaction? Do you, are you bloated? Mm -hmm. Are you constipated after eating? So all these things are, I mean, you are your best own doctor. You know what you can. And we go into denial sometimes, don't we? It's like, yeah. you know, yeah, that was okay. <laughs> I, that piece of cheese was great, but now I have an upset tummy. So just listen to yourself. You know, that's mm -hmm. what my advice would be. Dr. Younger? Well, I think the whole thing of what, the whole subject of what to eat is really confusing. Yeah. Because there's so many opinions, there's so mm. many books, there's so many philosophies, and Ayurvedic philosophy mm. with the doshas and the Chinese medicine philosophies, and, and, and then when we get lost, right? So I try to simplify things by telling people what not to eat, mm. right? And, and the way I think about it is like this. I have an exotic animal zoo in my house. And, and the way I feed them is the way that people that go out in the wild and observe and study how these animals feed themselves in the wild, and then they write manuals about it and I read them and, and I feed them, right? The problem with human beings is that we don't know how we are designed by nature to eat because there's no more examples of human beings living in the wild the way nature designed us to live. Mm. You know, so, so until we find that, I'm really not buying into one philosophy of what to eat. And I end up giving my patients the advice of what not to eat. Right? And, and, and it's kind of simple. Not, do not eat anything that your great-grandmother exactly. wouldn't recognize as food. Yeah, so true. Right? So that leaves out 90% of the products yeah. that we consume. You go to a supermarket, and, and if you take a bird's eye view, 90% of the things mm -hmm. that you can buy in a supermarket come in a box, in a jar, in a tube, in a exactly. can, right? And they're full of coloring agents, smelling agents, and texturizing agents. A, 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 all these, these uh, preservatives, conservatives, all these chemicals that are, are not really there to help your health. They're there to help the companies have a longer shelf life or be more attractive or make you more addicted to them, right? Mm -hmm. So that leaves us with only the, the periphery of the supermarket that your grand grandmother would recognize as food, with fruits, vegetables, and, and some animal products like fish, and, mm -hmm. you know. And even those, you gotta be careful because those are not grown in the wild mostly anymore. Right. They're grown in fish farms and, 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 and feeding lots, and, and mm -hmm. so you gotta be careful. Let's talk for a minute about chronic inflammation because I always thought I ate pretty well. Then I did clean, which if you've never done it, it's three weeks of essentially an elimination diet. So you have to be really considered. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of plants, clean, mm -hmm. proce like no processed food. And I remember after, I felt amazing. I actually did it for five weeks. You still look good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It does>. Um, <laughs> and, 
And I tried to have dairy, which is my favorite thing after wine. And, um, yeah, right. and I was like, what the hell? Like, I was so ill. I mean, because I think it's hard on the daily when you eat sort of everything. It's hard to distinguish, like, what's a real moment. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I don't understand. I've never had this before. And you were like, well, well you, you cleaned d- the wall. You, you did. Because yeah. that's why you said, I felt so good. What, what is the difference between how you were feeling before and feeling so good <laughs> was, was what you lost by reintroducing the things that don't, don't make you feel, feel so great. good all the time. Right. So do you eat like that all the time? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pig. <laughs> <laughs> And I have kids, and you know, I mean, life yeah, is I difficult. And, and, and the way that I discovered all these things, they were not because I was a purist and, oh, let me think about how the wild human beings would eat. I got really sick from eating junk, you know, and, and, and then I went to the doctors and I got tons of pills, and I said, wow, I don't want to deal with that. So I started looking for things. And I'm, strugg- I'm still struggling, you know, because yeah. I like a lot of things that make me sick. And I'm addicted to some of them. Yeah. I understand. What about you? What was the, like, the, where was the moment of connection between food and how you felt? You know, I, when I was younger, I had so many digestive issues, and I got the cop-out diagnosis IBS, mm-hmm. which is really BS, isn't it? It's a BS diagnosis. It's like, okay, well, you know, and I saw a naturopathic doctor, and then we did some food intolerance testing, which I really believe in because it has helped me and thousands of my patients. It's not the end-all and be-all, but it gives you an idea. And I had a few foods show up like garlic. I wasn't able to metabolize it. I also did some DNA testing, and it made me understand why garlic was so hard for me to digest uh, and how I would feel like I was hit by a truck after with it, like brain fog. Uh, and I eliminated all those symptoms within three months, 100% better after mm-hmm. seeing gastroenterologists. Then I thought, this is the kind of doctor I want to be. I want to be a doctor that's going to get the root cause of why somebody's feeling sick. Because anything you put in your mouth is going to affect you. We know our gut is our second brain, so it's going to cause you to have anxiety if you eat certain foods. It's cause you to be depression. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have just as much serotonin in your gut that you do in your brain. So when we get depression or we get anxiety, it's coming from here. And so I learned that, you know, growing up as a teenager and going through all these issues. You know what we're like when we're teenagers with anxiety and depression and, you know, digestive stuff and felt so much better. And I thought, wow, this is what I want to do. This Mm -hmm. is something I want people to be aware of, and that's why I went into medicine. And that's how I followed eating. And of course, I'm like you. I do the same thing, and I eat what I, I'm... Well, I'm not a pig. I'm a rat. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Chinese zodiac. <laughs> um, but, like, I love to eat, but now I'm really aware of what makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. And it's like a high when I eat things that make mm-hmm. me feel good. And, you know, when in Rome, if I go to Italy, yeah. I'm going to have pasta yeah. and wine. Let me Every day. Sure. Every day. Maybe twice. <laughs> Maybe twice. I was just there, I know. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's different when you eat it in Europe as well, because, again, this preservative is yeah. a massive well, there's problem. There's no GMO. There's no GMO. Yeah. And, you know, you even look at the studies they did on rats, because I love rats so much. They fed them the same diets, two groups of rats, but they put slow, insidious amounts of these toxins that we preservatives that we eat in our food just a small amount Mm -hmm. and those rats that got that actually gained weight so whenever we go on these Mm -hmm. fasts and you know you're saying you you go on these diets if you don't get rid of the preservatives in the food you're eating you know you're going to continue to feel sick you'll plateau your thyroid levels will be affected so anyway this is a long answer to your question sorry i get excited about this (laughs) Um, and so it, it affects everything you do. And I was able to see that in myself. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I want to help everybody else. I want to make sure that everybody gets the same treatment. Mm-hmm. But I also like to eat certain things that are in my book that I tell you not to eat. <laughs> Sometimes, 80-20 rule, 80-20 80-20, I think yeah, that's, that's true, totally reasonable. Right? Yeah, You've got you to well, enjoy. Right? Yeah. When that's you're restrictive, you become obsessive, totally. which is not helpful. Yeah. So, Carleen, do people primarily come to you for weight loss or health concerns or some combination of the two? 
I would say that over the course of 20 years and being in um, the nutrition field, it's it's varied. And I think now, just based on the demographic that I'm in, a lot of women's health mm -hmm. um, issues is a big part of what I talk about. And of course, every time I speak, it's all, we always start with the gut because it, as Hippocrates said over 2,000 years ago, it is the caveat of all healing. And I mean, this is common... Um, parking lot talk at my kids' school is women are exhausted, we're lacking energy, we're feeling burnt out and stressed out. I mean, my, my five-year-old once said, mommy, are you stressed? I'm like, okay, I think I better stop using that. <laughs> or because of this constantly, I feel so stressed, I feel so stressed. And mm -hmm. I think that's such a, a huge part of women in life and everything that we're trying to do and trying to balance. And the food connection to that is enormous, you know, supporting your adrenal glands and eating to support your gut health and incorporating more um, supportive nutrients and fermented foods. And these are just so important to really help heal and nourish. And everything in the body is connected, mm -hmm. you know, and I think if you start by healing the gut, it will have a huge trickle effect outwards. Speaking of stress, how do you make eating well mm -hmm. and whether the to say that the focus is exclusively on gut health, how do you make that in of itself not stressful for people? Yeah, it's true. Because we talk about food every single day. Yeah. Because it's such an integral part of what we do is we, we eat. And that can be stressful for people. Mm -hmm. And um, especially, you know, if you not just have your, your own self to feed, but you have other people in your home. You have children and they're picky eaters and you're feeding people on busy schedules. And it is very overwhelming. And then you got to think, oh, was this a real food, a whole food? Was there preservatives or artificial ingredients? Like, it's, it's an extremely overwhelming thing. So I, I think you need, to, you need to start slow, be easy on yourself. That's always the advice I give people. Like, you might leave here today feeling inspired to change so many things in your life, but just start slow and start, just be good to yourself and let it be the journey. I mean, I, for myself, it's been over 20 years. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune condition when I was in my late teens, and I was like the low-fat diet queen of the 90s. You know, like that was what everybody did. Fat-free yogurt, fat-free chips, fat-free cookies, as long as it said fat-free. To me, this was what I was supposed to be eating. And instead of eating fat, I was eating a ton of sugar. So you combine that with an autoimmune condition, which has tons of inflammatory response in the body. I was a disaster. Mm -hmm. I had no energy. I was in pain all the time, taking pharmaceutical drugs, taking Advil eight, nine times a day, literally. And I thought... If I feel like this when I'm 20, how am I going to feel when I'm 40s? So it was the beginning, and it was like slowly changing things and adding more good fats into my diet, which is why I became um, so into omegas and, and healthy fats and how healing they are, especially when we talk about inflammation. I mean, the omega fats are so important for decreasing mm -hmm. the inflammatory response in the body. So let's talk about inflammation, gut, and sort of what inflammation in the gut leads to. Well, the thing is, we talk, we talk a lot about what to eat or even what not to eat, right? But, but we've got to understand that there's, a, there's, a, there's another thing in play, which is, which is the, the gut, the health of your gut, right? Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we might be eating the perfect diet and the healthiest foods, but we will not process them the right way because mm -hmm. the gut is not healthy, meaning there is hyperpermeability or leaky gut, there is microorganisms, bacteria, fungus, uh, uh, viruses, b b parasites, whatever it is that is there. Or we even ha have the uh, good bacteria but in the wrong ratios, you know, mm -hmm. in, the, in the wrong percentages. So then we won't be digesting food very well. And, and even healthy foods can interact with our immune system in the gut, which is the, the, the biggest part of our immune system lives within and around the gut. So, so and, it, and it may be not in it, because most of us, most of the people walking around in the modern world today are walking around with some degree mm -hmm. of, of, a, of a broken gut, of Absolutely, an unhealthy yeah. gut. And, and it may not be enough just to start eating well, mm -hmm. because gut will not just fix itself because there's things that may be lacking that are very specific. There's things that may be um, necessary to, to, uh, to get the, that level of healing, right? So, so um, 
the reason I say this is because a lot of people start eating healthy, start following their advice, and then they don't get the, 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 the good results and they give up, right? Mm -hmm. And that is maybe the reason why it's not happening. So what do you do? Well, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta um, s you know, seek help of somebody who understands how to um, figure out what is wrong with your gut and then how to heal it. Right? And, and it, may, it may be um, that you need to get rid of certain bacteria may, or, or, or plant the right bacteria or feed the good bacteria with prebiotics or get rid of parasites, which is a huge problem that a lot of people uh, don't even realize they have. Um, or 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 um, help the body heal the the hyperpermeability or leaky gut. Mm -hmm. It may be as simple as taking extra glutamine, which is something that is very difficult to find in the diet in enough quantities in order to, for the body to to heal those those tight junctions in in uh, that that the cells from, uh, of the lining of our intestines should have. Or it may be something that seems unrelated to the gut, like, like high levels of, of heavy metals, mercury, lead, um, that, that don't allow uh, a healthy uh, flora to thrive. So there's a few mm -hmm. things that are, not a few, there's a bunch of things mm -hmm. that are in play in, in terms of getting your, health, your, your gut to a healthy state in which then a good diet will really benefit you. And what, like how do you, do you feel like if you have something chronic going on or you have something mysterious going on, like that is where you start? Like what are the symptoms that you would sort of... The thing is, the thing is... Tell us. Well, tell us everything. Think of it, the, think, <laughs> think of it this way. The, the, you know, if you have a garden or any plants in your home, you, you know, you, you know that when the leaves or the flowers or the fruit are not thriving and, 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 and healthy, you don't really go and treat the leaves and the flowers. And you go and look at the root and the soil around it. Mm -hmm. The root would be like our, like our gut, because that's where the plant sucks its nutrients from. And the gut is where we suck our nutrients from. The soil is our food, right? So th that's where the solution is. And, and, and the reason I mention that is because the, the leaves and the, and, the, and the fruit and the flowers are as distant as it could be from the roots, but that's where the problems start. So anything, problems in your skin, problems in your brain, problems in, your, in any organ, in any tissue of your body, usually, in, in, the, in the biggest percentage of cases, start somewhere in the gut. And, and by, by correcting that, then everything corrects itself, right? Mm -hmm. I also find so gas and bloating is such a, it's such a common problem, and I, I don't know if people necessarily connect that to, oh, maybe I have dysbiosis or a dysfunction in my gastrointestinal tract. I mean, how many people by 4 o'clock in the afternoon feel like they're five months pregnant because their mm -hmm. stomach is just bloating and they're feeling so gassy and distended? And so even small signals which are actually a sign of a larger problem are just really being in tune with your body and mm -hmm. knowing how it feels and how it acts on a on a daily basis is yeah and what's normal yeah, and I what's mean, normal yeah. yeah yeah when i met my husband i was like this is not normal <laughs> and he was shocked i mean he grew up in the midwest with yeah. a father who was also in his mind normal and i'm like that is not normal that smell <laughs> yeah. is not normal nothing about this is normal yeah <laughs> you guys can appreciate how much my husband loves being a character in, yeah, my, my in the show. Yeah. Um, but, and he took out gluten, which was enough Huge for him, him. Yeah. to become far more normal. But I think that mm -hmm. we're all, a lot of us are programmed yes. to be like, I always feel that way. Right, right. You don't know what is normal, normal. until you make a change. Yeah. And that's what a lot of my patients say. And that's why like, I, wrote, I ended up writing my book because I kept giving handouts to my patients and I said, that's it. I'm going to create a clear, correct, protect program. And this is what you were saying. You want to clear out the bad foods. You want to clear out the parasites. You want to clear out the bacteria, the candida. And then you want to correct, and you want to put in the good bacteria, and then you want to protect the gut lining with things like glutamine and foods that are rich in glutamine. And if you follow the three steps, 
that's where you can start to see wellness. You can start to see patients feeling better. And I think that's part of it is if, you know, people are following diets and fads, you really have to go to the root. You really mm -hmm. have to go to who's living in your gut. And God knows I've done thousands of stool tests on patients, not me personally, but I've sent them home with a kit. And I've reviewed in my 20 years of practice, I don't know how many thousands of stool test results. And the interesting part is, you know, somebody will say, well, I don't have any digestive problems. Mm -hmm. I just get migraines or I get eczema or I get acne. Can you help me? Because you're like the skin doctor, aren't you? And I said, yes, but it's coming from your gut. And more than often, you'll put, I'll put them on the clear, correct, protect program based on assessing their stool and seeing who's living in there and who shouldn't be living in there. And 99% of the time, that skin problem is gone within three months. Mm -hmm. And that dermatologist that we're giving them steroid creams, that's just a Band-Aid approach. That is not getting to the root cause. Mm -hmm. And that is what we as practitioners and as you know, writers and what we're trying to get out there is that the root cause is sitting in your gut. That is like a hundred trillions of bugs living in there. And they're good for us. They benefit us. They, they're the best antibiotic is the bacteria in your gut. Mm -hmm. you know? And when you take antibiotics, it causes dysbiosis. It causes an unhappy environment. And you get other symptoms. And it goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Autoimmune, leaky gut. Mm -hmm. All of us in this room have leaky gut, FYI. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, you know, and it's only one cell thick, by the way, the epithelial lining. cell lining. It's mm -hmm. like one cell. It's so, a paradox. Right? Isn't it a paradox? Because yeah. the good things that come in, the nutrients, the vitamins, but also the bad stuff gets in as well. So we have to be really careful what we're putting in here mm -hmm. because it is going to go in your bloodstream and it's going to affect you. We'll come back to our chat in just a minute. Skin care. Two little words that get a ton of airtime over here at Goop. Our passion runs deep. So deep, we created our own line of powerful non-toxic skincare, published a book called Goop Clean Beauty, and just launched a drinkable collagen powder. So yes, we're mindful about what we put on our bodies, but we're equally tuned into what we're feeding them. And for better or worse, what I eat inevitably seems to show up on my skin, which is where delicious superfoods like blue diamonds, whole natural almonds can come in. An easy source of skin-friendly vitamin E, along with minerals and fiber, this is a snack that can help keep skin looking and feeling good. And it doesn't hurt that Blue Diamond's non-pareil supreme almonds are addictively snackable and satisfying. You can blend them right into smoothie bowls. I pack them for midday pick-me-ups when I'm traveling. And in the Goop Test Kitchen, the team uses them when they're cooking, too. Visit goop.com to get the full recipes our editors whipped up with Blue Diamond Whole Natural Almonds. Okay, back to our gut health talk. Speaking of antibiotics and sort of how, on one hand, they're so amazing and life-saving, and then on the other hand, like I grew up in the age, also being a doctor's kid, where it was like, take a pack. Let's talk about like fecal transplants and what's Ooh. happening there. You said you wanted to talk you about love shit. I, totally I love that. I love fecal <laughs> transplants. But do you think that something like fecal transplant or the idea of taking a very healthy microbiome from someone else and planting it in a sort of decimated gut. Do you think that'll become really, like, I know they're studying it extensively at UCLA and at other places. Do you feel like that will become a mainstream? I personally don't know if it will become a mainstream, but I'll tell you something. <laughs> if you do a fecal transplant on somebody to somebody else, from somebody to somebody else, and that somebody else who's getting the transplant doesn't eat exactly like the one that gave him the transplant, it ain't gonna work. Interesting. Yeah, because if, 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 uh, if, if your bacteria in the gut are decimated and you have dysbiosis, there's a reason why. And it's most likely because of what you eat and what you don't eat. And it, of course, there's antibiotics and there's preservatives yeah. and all whatever. whatever. But, but if, if you get the, 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 the bacteria from somebody and put them there, unless they start living like, like the donor, it ain't gonna work. And also, if you were genetically 
like they again the rat studies the genetically obese rats say i was a neutral rat and you and you're going to be the genetically obese one okay <laughs> say you gave me cuz i don't want to you gave me your microbiota and i'm a neutral rat i'm going to end up becoming obese so you have to be careful what microbiota you're getting because mm -hmm. if you get a obese one I mean, I wouldn't mind getting a lean rat one <laughs> any day. Um, yeah, and, and so with depression and so with all many, of that. And many things. Yes. You, you get everything, right? So you have to be careful whose mm -hmm. microbiota you're getting. So there's no magic pill. But if you had C. difficile, for example, right. you had a bad bacteria yeah. and you were hospitalized, antibiotics only work to certain limits. So you can get... If you can get a donor and it will clear up that infection quicker than antibiotics. So there is something in it Got for it. the future. Definitely. There is. But I don't think it's going to be totally mainstream, but it'll be one of those things that will be available and should be available. But you just have to get the right donor, not Got a it. genetically obese Fine. rat. I don't want a fecal transplant anymore. Um, <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about <laughs> the ketogenic diet, Ooh. like science of eating, intermittent yeah. fasting. Yeah. What are you, how, in terms of, what, what are you interested in? And it's, what do you find is like widely applicable? You know what's interesting? The ketogenic diet's become very popular in the I last know. 18 months. Has anybody tried keto here? Essentially the premise is you eat high fat diet low carb, moderate protein, and you help your body produce something called ketones. And ketones are these water soluble molecules and they can actually bypass into the brain. And so people report, yes, a lot of times people are starting it to help their body lose weight, but one of the side benefits of it is they feel so much more energetic. They feel that brain fog they've had has been lifted and they can concentrate their laser focus. They just overall feel better. And I've had so many consumers tell me I did the keto and I stayed on it because all of a sudden had more energy in the day. And yes, I lost 20 or 30 pounds, but the, the feeling I had and the energy levels I had were just addictive. And I think that initially getting into ketosis can take a couple of days. It's actually quite easy to do. The switch over to eating a high fat diet has to be done very carefully because it can't just be like mm. all of a sudden you're just eating tons of fat. You have to have really nourishing uh, coconut oil and medium chain triglycerides, for example, help your body produce ketones very readily. So MCTs, when you have coconut oil, as an example, it goes right to your liver and it's burned for energy. Mm. So it functions differently in the body. So so there are certain oils and nutrients that you want to incorporate when you're switching over to a keto. But I think long term also when it comes to food, I think if you're looking at something and saying, there's no way in six months I can be eating like this, I don't know if it's the right plan. I mean, yes, yeah. you might want to wear a bathing suit on your Christmas vacation and feel a certain way or look a certain way. but. I think long term you have to really adopt an eating plan that's going to work for you. It's about lifestyle changes. It's not about losing 10 pounds now and then gaining 20 back right. in six months. And so I think keto, the ketogenic diet can definitely help you um, get there. And then I think there's a modified version of the keto mm. diet. And I would say that that's more similar to how like I would eat less of the ref definitely less refined carbs, um, really nourishing fats, moderate levels of protein, and um, can be very beneficial. And you I'm, can do it through intermittent, I'm gonna, right? I'm going to burst the keto bubble. Yeah, to do it. <laughs> so when I, when I moved from South America to, to New York after medical school, and in, in South America I was doing taekwondo every day. I was in tip-top shape. I moved to New York and I started eating bagels and crap. And, and, <laughs> and, and I, I became mildly obese, right, while I was doing my cardiology fellowship. And I, and I couldn't stand it. So I went to a trainer in New York, and, I, and he had a six-pack. And I said, how, what do I have to do? How long is it going to take me? And how much is it going to cost me to come? <laughs> and I lifted my, I showed him my gut, and I, uh, and I showed him his. And he said, well, you know, I said, and this guy taught me something incredible. In the, in the 70s or, or early 80s, there was a group of, of bodybuilders in Gold's Gym in Venice, California. I used to work out oh, there. Right. Yeah. And, and some of them were Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lou Ferrigno, and all these guys that became Mr. Universe. And, and they had a, um, a scientist with them called Daniel or Dan Duchesne. And this guy was really, really smart. And, and 
of course, every bodybuilder knows that the livelihood depends and, and winning competitions depends on increased muscle mass and decreased fat con a, a percentage, right? And the fat is mostly under your skin. So, so you have to increase your muscle mass, you have to decrease your fat, which is two uh, opposite things. You have to mm -hmm. tell the body on, in, one, in one hand to build anabolic yeah. mm -hmm. stuff, right? And on the other hand to do a catabolic process, which is burning fat. And that, that is kind of confusing. And this, this scientist said, you know, he started looking at who are the leanest people around. And he realized that the leanest people around were type 1 diabetics that go into a crisis called mm, ketoacidosis, ketosis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? When they don't have insulin around, right? And this is something that can kill them, right? And this guy said, whoa, what if I recreate this condition of ketoacidosis and, and because ketone bodies actually are produced in the body when the body doesn't have insulin and cannot use carbohydrates as an alternative fuel to carbohydrates. And it's, and it's a, actually a survival and adaptive mechanism. And in the long term, it kills you. Mm. So, so yes, it'll make mm. you lose weight, it'll make you burn fat, right? Mm -hmm. but, but easy on, on, mm. the, on the keto wagon, right? And then, and then what happened is Dan Duchesne, who wrote a book about it called The Opus Diet, and if you're interested, you should read that and, and figure out how, how it can. Then he, was, he, he, he captured the attention of a doctor called Dr. Atkins, who said, ah, I'm going to steal mm -hmm. this idea and use it and make some money on it. And then, and then there was a doctor that said, well, Atkins is not very healthy because it puts you too much into acidosis. And so they introduced a little bit of carbohydrates. It became the South Beach diet. Mm -hmm. mm. And now, and now there's right. a whole rebirth of yeah. the keto thing. And, and nobody really fully understands what's going on. So easy on the keto diet in the <laughs> long term. In the short term, it That's may be good. great, just like Atkins. Intermittent fasting, though. Well, the thing is this. Intermittent fasting, ketogenesis, paleo, all, all, these, all these movements that mm -hmm. are now famous and, and detoxification done in the right way, they all mm -hmm. converge one in, in one thing, which is the formation of ketone bodies. Mm -hmm. So there is something about the formation of ketone bodies and putting your body into that state mm -hmm. that, that agrees with our genetic composition because we, we are still genetically very similar to what we were thousands of years ago. And thousands of years ago, most people say, because nobody really knows, that we were like the rest of the animals running around the planet looking for food eating it when we found it, and then looking for it again until the next time we found it. Therefore, uh, there, there were imposed times of fasting, and there was episodes of feasting, right? And during the imposed times of fasting, obviously you go into ketosis. Mm -hmm. so, so going into ketosis, forming ketone bodies, there's something about it that, that really benefits the body. Now, the, where is the limit between forming ketone bodies and going to ketoacidosis, which is what type 1 diabetics do right before they die? Yeah, we don't, I, I don't think anybody really understands enough and looked at it enough to just jump on that wagon and say, oh my God, I want to be keto for, you know? So get off the wagon, guys. <laughs> and no wine on ketogenic diet. I know. <laughs> well, if you're only doing 20 grams of carbs a day, there's no... Do you love it? I'm just kidding. I no do. wine. I know. No gluten. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about, like, fasting? Do you, do you integrate that at all? Well, honestly, the, the, the thing about fasting, the intermittent fasting that I like, is it gives your gut a break. You know, our gut needs a bit of a break. And if you do it, you know, there's certain fasting that you can do, you know, stop eating after a certain time at night and then resume your eating in the, in the daytime. But I always start with warming foods. I just think that people are doing, there's so many diets. And again, you need to do what's good for you. And you're going to know what works for you. And I think these intermittent fasting diets, they can be tough on some people. You know, those people are creatures of habit. And then we get into bad habits when we're mm -hmm. doing those kinds of diets. So I think, you know, there is a, exactly what you're saying. I mean, it's, I was going to say 
same shit, different pile. At the end of the day, like, it's like all these diets are the same, right? Mm -hmm. There are these You keto. potty mouth. I know, what's going on with me today? You're I such a lady, and then that's why I like And my you. mom's here, too, so <laughs> sorry, mom. <laughs> no, it's true. I find that I naturally fast, so I just kind of go with it. Yeah. yeah. But I Listen think to your it's body. funny. Yeah, it's like... Do you fast in the morning? Yeah. Um, my yeah. dad was always like, if you're not hungry, don't eat. Right. Even though so many doctors are like, or mm -hmm. not even doctors, I don't even know where some of these things come yeah. from. That's the interesting thing about our culture, like mm -hmm. the sugar, like the low, low fat. fat. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I guess the breakfast, lunch, and dinner is a cultural. Yeah, it is. Invention. It's a cultural what we were invention. programmed to do, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But totally. I think the intermittent fasting is really good for a lot of people for the whole health of your gut and yeah. giving your gut a break. Most people feel really good doing that. Yeah. Is there anything, any breakthroughs, anything that you're really excited about? Anything that you're, you want everyone to do? I am actually very excited about what you put, called my attention to, which is those two father and son that are working on studying... The, the fungal flora in the mm. gut. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm waiting for the right moment to go visit them. Where, where are they? Do you in remember Seattle, the where are they? Yeah, doctor, I can't say his last name. What is it? Guy. It's part of biome, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm dying to go visit them. They, because you introduced me to them, they invited me. Yeah. I just want to go and see because apparently it's not just about bacteria. There's a bunch of, 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 of healthy fungus that should be living in your gut. And this is what these people are working on. Yeah, yeah it's and fascinating. I, and, and from the little conversation that I had with them, it sounds like it's breakthrough, fascinating stuff. Interesting. They're fascinating. Are so there any tests that you routine? I know you do stool tests. Biome is a stool test. Like, what do you, what's in your arsenal? Where yeah, do you think people should start? Labs? I, I definitely think people should, we should start at the doing stool tests at least. I mean, unless we come up with something more sophisticated, looking at who's living in the gut, the balance between the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm -hmm. um, it really, really does affect how you feel. And we can see all these chronic illnesses, autoimmune, mm -hmm. fibromyalgia, all these people with these symptoms that no matter what they do, they, they don't feel better. I think the yeah. gut is a really interesting place to start. And I think the research, the fascinating research around the gut, there's a lot of things we don't know. Oh, yeah. I think happening. they're just scratching the surface. We're just, finally it's becoming really, yeah. you know. Just, and, and just like yeah. with the foods, right. I, I, you know, everybody tells you what to do. I told you what not yeah. to do. With tests, everybody will tell you what to do. I'll tell you what not to do. Don't do food allergy studies mm. because those are at best confusing, at worst a, a, a big problem, right? Mm -hmm. Because the thing is this, you do a food allergy test. First of all, you don't know that the foods that they tell you you are allergic to, you don't really know if that is true or not. Mm -hmm. And if it is true, once you correct the problems in your gut, that may not be the problem. That's right. Absolutely. But very few people really do that. So then there's, it's a life sentence. You say, oh, no, I cannot eat blueberries. Yeah. I cannot eat chicken. I can't. <laughs> and and, and, and it's, stuck, it's stuck in your, in your head. And then you even have a psychological reaction to mm. it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so a way So avoid you yourself. The, Are you like, going to go to the mat? I totally understand <laughs> what you're saying. I think if you do it properly... And again, with the, exactly what you said, you could have a problem with blueberries because you're having leaky gut. That intolerance, once you fix your gut, yeah, it'll, go away. it'll go away. But I like to take the burden off the body initially to get rid of some of the foods. And psychologically, you need to counsel the person. You can't just have a random, you know, and it has to be a good lab. And, and you also have to understand the test is not foolproof. Mm -hmm. There's 15% false negativities, mm -hmm. and there's a, there's a whole psychological thing around it. But what I find is when you give people the hope that they can start to feel better by eliminating some of the foods, they will then do everything in their power to then eat healthy there on end. So it's one of the things, one of the tools I use clinically, um, but it does. I love what you said. It has to be explained properly. It has to be, you know, there's a whole psychological thing around it. 
And the cells are turning over all the time. So it's like sure. we get another chance to you rebuild. Get and I think that's the silver lining in health and yeah. why nutrition and natural health products and food can be so impactful. Every three months, your body and your cells are continually rebuilding. And I think this is huge because you can get better and uh, you, can, you can feel better. Well, the body has an innate ability to, to heal. heal itself if given the right environment. Yes. That would be... Then you can feel better. You can, will we look like That's you? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining us today. I know you couldn't see Enigma, Alejandro, and Carlene, but I don't think I'll ever moderate a better-looking panel or a wiser one. Definitely check out their sites and books and head over to goop.com slash the podcast if you want to see more on gut health. Tomorrow, the day before Thanksgiving, I'll be back on the podcast with someone who has changed the way I think about gratitude. The following week, we'll have two podcasts, one on Tuesday and one on Thursday, so be sure to tune in. And just tap subscribe to make it easier to keep up. If you like what you heard today, please rate, review, and share with your friends too. Thanks for listening, and talk soon.